Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. If you're finding these videos helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Today, we're talking about a game theory struggle. We're talking about dynamic games. We're talking about how to find the Nash equilibrium of dynamic games. The way we're going to do that, we are going to revisit the incumbent entrant or the firm entrant game that we have seen before. We're going to turn that game from a static game into a dynamic game. We'll talk about how to represent that game on paper with something called extensive form. And then we'll go through and solve the Nash equilibrium of this new dynamic firm or incumbent entrant game. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's review the firm entrant game first of all. So if you remember the firm entrant game, we've got a gas station on one corner of the street and we've got a potential gas station, someone who is thinking of opening a gas station on the other side of the street. This potential new gas station is choosing whether or not to enter the market, and this firm or incumbent gas station is choosing whether or not to fight or yield. Fight meaning engage in a price war with this new gas station, yield meaning do not engage in a price war with this new gas station. So we set this up in normal form or matrix form where the incumbent can choose fight or yield, the entrant can choose enter or not enter. Here are the payoffs and we found the two pure strategy Nash equilibrium, which were entrant enters and incumbent yields and entrant does not enter and incumbent fights. If you're a bit confused on these pure strategy Nash equilibrium, feel free to re-review that pure strategy Nash equilibrium video. Otherwise, let's continue and talk about how we're going to turn this into a dynamic game. Now, first, just so we are all on the same page, let's do an example of a static versus dynamic game, just so we have a clear idea of the differences. So a, an example of a static game is like rock, paper, scissors, right? You and your friend are playing. You are choosing whether you play rock, paper, or scissors at the exact same time, and there are no turns. A dynamic game is like chess or any sort of board game where there are turns, right? So player one makes a decision, then player two makes a decision, and the decisions that each of you make may depend on what the other person does, right? Like if you're playing chess and your opponent puts you into check, then your decisions that you can make are limited because of what the other person has chosen. So we're going to see that here as well in dynamic games. Now, we say that we represent static games, like this version of the firm entering game or the incumbent entering game is a static game. We've represented it as both people move at the same time. We are going to turn this into a dynamic game where one player moves and then the other, and we're going to let entrant go first and incumbent will go second. So as I said before, this is something called extensive form. That is the way we represent a dynamic game on paper. So extensive form is a dynamic game. Now, the way we're going to do this is I want you to picture a flow chart. That's how an extensive form feels. It's more like a flow chart where we start with the beginning of the game and we go through, we flow through each of the player's choices until we get to the end of the game, the end of the game indicating the payoffs for each player. So the payoffs, I'm going to say we're going to have entrance payoffs first and then incumbents payoffs second. So we said entrant goes first, so I'm going to write an E and I'm going to draw a circle around this E. This is going to be called a choice node. This is the entrance choice node, meaning entrant is making a choice at this point of the game. This is the start of the game, and he's got two choices. So if he chooses not to enter, then the game is over, and the entrant gets zero, and the incumbent gets two, just like up here in this static form version. The payoffs that we're going to see in this extensive form are going to be identical to the payoffs we see in the dynamic game. So that's something to keep in mind and useful to keep track of as we go through writing down this extensive form. So the entrant cannot enter or he can enter. Now, if he enters, then it becomes the incumbent's turn. So we're going to write another choice node. This choice node is owned by the incumbent. The incumbent is the one making the choice. 
And the incumbent can do two things. He can fight or he can yield. Either way, it's going to be the end of the game. If he fights, then that's equivalent to enter fight. And we know that's a payoff of negative one for both of them. And if incumbent yields, then we're in this enter yield situation, which we know they split the market and they're at one one. Okay. We can use parentheses or not. Some books will, some books will not. The parentheses around the payoffs are not necessarily super important. What is important is that you know that this payoff is not enter and that this payoff down here is enter yield. Now, how are we going to solve this game? I talked about backwards induction before. What is backwards induction? Backwards induction is the idea that we are going to start from the end of the game and we are going to work our way to the beginning of the game. So we are going to figure out what the person at the end of the game would choose. So the last person's decision, and then we are going to go to the start of the game. So if we're still thinking about chess as our analogy, we are going to think about checkmate first, and then we are going to work our way back from checkmate all the way to the first move by the first player. So that is the idea. So let's do blue and I'm going to write circles to indicate what are called subgames. Subgames are decisions that one person makes. They're like mini games within the large game. So let's think about the two mini games within this game, and then we can solve each mini game and see where we end up. So this is a mini game. This is a sub game and come is choosing between fight or yield. And then the entire game is also itself a mini game. That is something important to know that the entire game is also a sub game or a mini game of itself. So first we'll solve this last mini game here or the second mini game. So incumbent is choosing between fight or yield. If they choose yield, they get one. If they choose fight, they choose negative one. So they're gonna choose yield. So now we can think of it as entrant knows that if he chooses to enter, incumbent will be choosing between fight or yield. And he's gonna choose yield because yield will give incumbent a higher payoff than fighting. So now entrant is playing this mini game where he knows if he chooses not to enter, he gets zero. And if he chooses to enter, he's going to get one where he is going to get one because incumbent is choosing yield and the payoffs for incumbent choosing yield are one to one, one and one. So he's gonna choose enter. I'll put that in a different color just to make it more clear. So now what we can do is we can see if there's a path from the start of the game to the end of the game, to a payoff node. These little coordinates or these pairs of payoffs, this is called a payoff node. These happen at the end of the game. So we can see, is there a connected set of choices that go from the start of the game to the end of the game? There are, so incumbent will choose enter and then, sorry, entrant will choose enter and then incumbent chooses yield. So we have this nice, line from the start of the game to the end of the game. And this nice path that starts at the beginning of the game and goes all the way through the end, this is what we call the equilibrium path. So the equilibrium path says that this subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is equal to enter yield where entrant enters and incumbent yields. Note that that was one of the Nash equilibrium that we saw in the static version of this game, but we did not get to this Nash equilibrium where entrant chooses not to enter and incumbent chooses to fight. So why is that? The reason is because that is off the equilibrium path. So here is the not enter fight equilibrium. We'll put it in green. So here's not enter fight in green. So this is the two sets of arrows. Note that there is no world in which entrant believes that incumbent will actually fight. This is what we call a non-credible threat or off equilibrium path rationality, 
What in the world does that mean? That means that entrant knows that if he chooses to enter, incumbent's going to yield because incumbent will always choose the payoff that is better for incumbent. So incumbent will never choose to take this negative one over the one. So even if incumbent comes over to this new potential gas station and says, hey, if you try to enter this market, I'm going to gain in a price war with you and we're going to end up both at negative one, then entrant is going to say, well, that's not credible because I know that if I enter, you are always going to choose yield. And you are trying to tell me something about off equilibrium path activity. And that is just not credible. So the reason that this static game has two pure strategy Nash equilibrium, while this dynamic game only has one sub game perfect Nash equilibrium, is that this static game does not account for off equilibrium path activity or credibility. So hopefully that makes more sense in terms of dynamic games and backwards induction. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for a, another case of Econ Struggles.